Okay, it works now. So what is Docker? If you maybe don't know, I, I hope everybody knows, but maybe you don't. So it's basically like a virtual machine, but at least on uh, Linux, you end up not paying for the performance. It also works on uh, Windows and Mac, but I cannot vouch for that. I have not used it actually on these platforms. So why would you want to use it? Or why would you even want to put your simulation environment into Docker and maybe even your whole whole uh, development environment? So you get rid of these problems that uh, thing work in, things work in one computer but don't work in another computer. You know, maybe you have multiple guys uh, using the same, same uh, simulational environment, then you would like to, to install stuff one time and do it one time and be done, right? So that's mainly why you want to do that. How to do that? Uh, basically, you have to build your own images. It's not that hard. I will show a simple example. Uh, so maybe you don't have to build your own images. There is a thing like uh, Docker Hub, uh, where people have done a lot of work already building stuff for you. So uh, GHDL is very strong on Docker Hub. Uh, and there are also images like that have Quartus, Quartus inside. So that's pretty interesting. You can just uh, download that and you have Quartus, uh, Fuse, or Kikarus. So in reality, you kind of still need to build your own stuff because you want to add something. Maybe, maybe this thing is a little bit outdated, right? So let's go for a simple example. Uh, example is uh, building a GHDL and CocoDB image. So first thing about uh, Docker is that you have to make this Docker file which will be built and the first line is uh, from where you're going to base your image. So currently I'm basing from GHDL so that's like a very cool feature because now I already have GHDL, I don't have to do anything else and they also have Ubuntu. So next step is to install dependencies because I want to install Coco TV, right? I uh, need to install Python stuff. Uh, if your test bench uses so like NumPy, you need to install it here. Uh, then classical uh, clone, build, and final things, what you probably want to do, set some e en environment variables. So you don't have to, you can overwrite them later on the command line, but it kind of makes things easier, in my opinion. So, for example, I'm saying that we are using VHDL, we are using GHDL, so I don't have to do that later. So what if you need to run uh, netlist simulations? Uh, for example, with Quartus, then that's what I did. Uh, I just copied <coughs> the, everything from this uh, simulation uh, libraries from my, from my local installation. I copied everything to my uh, Docker image don't know if that's legal, but I don't know, it, it works. And then you basically compile all this stuff with GHDL. And that's the last time I have to do that. I'm very happy because actually finding out where this uh, script is was not that simple. So, so after you have done all this work, you just have to build it. You probably want to push to Docker Hub because then you can, for example, start using the same, same image on your CI. For example, in uh, Travis CI, you will just pull from Docker Hub and you don't have to do any, any in, in installing there. And that's how you, that's how you use, use it. There is like some boilerplate now, but uh, usually for CocoDB, you would run this make command and some whatever environment valuables, values. And now you have to map your uh, your uh, directory where you are. I'm mapping this to the Docker, to the Docker folder, and basically that's it. Um, other stuff I have been try, I tried to do with Docker and ended up working really well. So that's the uh, Wi-Fi band 
uh, monitoring device that I briefly showed you yesterday. And I wanted to make it like plug and play. So you could take the device, put it into your computer, and it would work, right? But uh, that was like pretty hard to do because first I need to program the FPGA. I need some software to program it. I need the FPGA bitstream. Uh, I need actually a driver to run this board. And what's worse, I, I, I made some hacks into the driver, so you would have to build, build from my branch. That's a problem. And I made graphical user interface in Python, for, which for some reason is also pretty hard to uh, distribute. I don't know why, but that's how it is. So I just tried putting this all into Docker. I installed everything into Docker, and actually it works. You basically plug in your device into a computer that has uh, uh, Linux and Docker, and you map this uh, USB port to the Docker file, and you don't have to install anything. So it's basically plug and play. Uh, so uh, I think uh, many people know about Docker, but uh, maybe don't use it. Uh, I was in the same situation, then I uh, suddenly found time to use it, and I think it's really good, so I think you should try. And thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. My understanding is that the folks who love Docker the most think that each of the layers that you put into Docker are supposed to be very thin layers which is very difficult with adding Cordis into a layer since it is a, going to be a giant layer. Did you find that that, that was any additional problem because Cordis's uh, giantness didn't necessarily mesh with uh, Docker's expectations or the, any of the other tools' expectations of these layers being relatively small? I think the maximum size you can push is like uh, 7 uh, gigabytes. After, after that, you will have problems. And Quartus uh, actually fits. So. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. So I ran into similar issues when for LibreCore CI, which is also using Docker, right? Um, so what we did there is we have like a tools volume that we just mount to slash tools on all machines. So you just decouple like the EDA tools in all different versions also you sometimes use. So maybe it's something to consider. OK. You should definitely speak also <laughs> after the talk. Any other questions? Olof. So I'm not that I haven't used Docker uh, anything, but uh, how does it work with also the hardware interfacing part? I mean, like like in your example, you're, you're programming an FPGA. Can you put your can can you run your programming tools from inside the Docker container? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can just map devices inside the machine. <laughs> Any other questions? <gasps> Stop it. Hello, I, I use Docker quite a bit as well. I find that there's always a bit of overhead with the I.O. Do you, do you ever get that? Like hard drive accesses or network access? Seems mm -hmm. like there's an extra copy involved going through MM, IO MMU or something. I, I don't know. I have, I have not done that kind of uh, benchmarking. So it's just been noticeable for me because I run like my toolchain builds on it, and they're much slower in in Docker. But it, it's nice because I can just run it and forget about it. I don't have to set up my toolchain build environment. But I notice it's a bit slower. I'm uh, running my tools also, and I don't see that behavior, but maybe maybe I just don't see it. Have you considered running your own Docker server uh, for improving the speed? I mean, even if you don't hit the 7 gig uh, wall, it's quite a bit of traffic you produce on your own internet connection. So if you have your own Docker server, this might improve? No, I have not tried that. I'm, I'm putting everything to the Docker Hub. That's simple. Yeah. But I think one issue there is that it's not properly caching, right? The Docker Hub also. So when you publish something, it 
just recreates all the layers more or less. Any other questions? Otherwise, thank you very much. Great talk. <laughs>